Welcome to our video on connecting content. We will show you how you can remote control STL Throttle Studio to automate things like creating projects, exporting translator packages, analyzing files, um, etc. So what um, I will do is I will start by showing you how you can actually set up uh, connecting content and then later on we will see uh, how you will run it which will typically be automatically in the background. So. What I have here is, uh, of course, Travel Studio with the typical sample project. I have also prepared a Word doc, which I will use for uh, my presentation and will create uh, a project automatically once it gets dropped into a certain folder, which I'm creating now. I will call that in uh, and I will also create an out folder for things like analysis results, error logs, uh, etc. So once I've done this, I will start uh, the GUI of connecting content, which is used for configuring uh, the whole thing, which you will do once, uh, and then it basically always runs in the background. Connecting content uses what I call instances. So basically you can set up different kind of configuration for different kind of incoming folders, and they all run um, automatically. Of course, we have some general settings, um, like uh, a name for this kind of uh, instance, um, some default data which gets used in case uh, Studio does not receive the data uh, from the call. Uh, then we have things like translation memories, um, the typical translation memory options you know from Studio, like uh, if you want to update it, use it, activate it, etc., penalties, uh, and of course source and target languages. Uh, we also support server-based translation memories and of course we also support term bases. So what I'll do is, um, there is no term base in here yet, so I will just add one now. Um, let me see if I can find the STL uh, sample term base that uh, always gets installed along with Studio. So it should be somewhere uh, here in documents. There we go, STL still not the term samples and here we have a term base uh, and once we click on apply uh, it will read or connecting will read the languages that are in this term base um, and of course we also support server based term bases uh, and we can also map languages in case you have different names of your languages in different term bases. So let's look at uh, the jobs that we can define in this instance. So I will uh, define one job here, uh, which is called standard project creator, which will basically uh, be run afterwards in order to automatically create projects. Um, here we have uh, the name of the error file. Uh, and what I will do now is I will define the incoming and the outgoing folder that we use for the automation. Uh, we just created those on the desktop. So I just select them here in and out and I'm done here. Uh, and then I can define an input. So what kind of file will be coming into this folder? I will just tell it whatever, but it could be uh, an XML file, for instance. It could also be a return package uh, from a translator. But in this case, it will just be whatever file. Next, if we want to, we can uh, create some automatic emails. For instance, I could uh, send an email to our support, help, uh, and use a certain uh, predefined email template, uh, of course, only if there's an error. I don't need to warn them if something went OK. Um, but in this case, I won't do that because there's no mail server here anyhow. Uh, and then we define what steps, what tasks should be carried out. These are basically the ones you know from Studio. Um, so the first one is create project. And here we have to tell it uh, what name will our project receive. So here I'm telling it, OK, it's called project year, month, day. And then we just have a sequential number that starts in each month with one. Uh, I have project manager, translator, and language combination. Um, and I have lots of other options that you all know from Studio, such as penalties, server-based project TMs, um, etc. So that's the create project step. Um, next, of course, we have to scan the file, see what file type it is. Then we have to convert it to a translatable format. Um, and then we copy it to the target languages. We can also analyze it here. We can also pass the typical analysis options. Um, per language pair, so we can say report cross file repetitions and internal fuzzies um, or not. Um, and in this case, I also want to have an output um, because I want to have the analysis report uh, in the out folder. So this is not, uh, this is just an option. Of course, you don't have to write output files, but it uh, might be convenient. Uh, and the last thing we want to do is we actually want to open the project so it will get added um, to the project list within Studio. You could ask other, have other tasks like exporting translator packages, pre-translating the files, etc. So everything you know from Studio, uh, you can automate uh, here in the setup. So let's run this. Let's see how we can uh, run this. Basically, um, in, in our uh, application version, uh, we have a button where we can start running it. Of course, in the end, it will run in the background just as a service. So now I will just press on play here. Uh, that will basically call up a console 
which is also nice for the demo because we can see what it's doing. So we can see, okay, it's loading the instances, uh, the watchdogs are watching the in-out folder, etc. So I'll drop my Word file into the in folder, or copy it actually, uh, and let's see in the console what's actually going on. Okay, here is our file, but I wanted actually to have the console. Uh, and you can see, okay, it hasn't detected yet that there's a file. Um, it only looks in there every, I don't know, 15 seconds uh, or something like that. So uh, we'll have to wait until the watchdog actually detects that there's a file there. Okay, now it has detected it, so it starts running. It creates the project first. Uh, once that is done, it will uh, run all the other tasks. And you can see, okay, it's executing the task scan. Uh, converts to translatable, copy, etc. Uh, it executes the file uh, and analyze, uh, the process analyze. Um, so it does all the things that the wizard will also do if you do this manually in Studio. Um, and in the end what it does is it also calls Studio because we also had the step open project. Um, so it opens Studio uh, in order to add the file uh, to the list of projects uh, in Studio. Um, so let's see how long it takes for a Studio to launch. Okay, it's a demo machine, but it should be coming up. Okay, here it is. Now, where did my studio go? Uh, here it is, and you can see, voila, there's the project uh, that we just created with the name. So it's the fourth project um, that I'm creating this month. And uh, you can see it has uh, the sample file in there. Well, not yet, but okay, here it is. Uh, the sample file is in there. Of course, it hasn't been pre-translated, so there's no progress. Um, but you can see there's the analysis. It's a very, very small file. Uh, so. Just for the demo, I didn't take 300 pages, so it's a little bit faster. But you can see uh, everything that you would expect and everything that you would have uh, if you have a normal studio project set up manually is here. Uh, and that's basically what uh, Connecting Contents does.